Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 62 of the Ortho Val Pal podcast. Uh, I can't help but laugh. I just finished doing this podcast for the last 17 to 18 minutes, realized that my microphone was not turned on. Um, so, you know, really, I should be a professional at this now. You know, it's episode 62. I should be figuring this out. Um, so this podcast is going to go by pretty well because I've uh, already done it. So, um, so thanks a lot for listening, everybody. I really appreciate you uh, joining me on Ortho Eval, pal. We've had some great response from uh, folks from all over the place. And today we're going to be talking about proximal versus distal bicep ruptures. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the anatomy. We're going to talk about how you injure your uh, biceps, how to identify the difference between a proximal and a distal biceps rupture, and the importance of managing these expeditiously if it's one versus the other. But before we get started, I'd like to just take a moment to hear a word from our sponsor. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. So let's talk about biceps ruptures. I know that you're all familiar with them. Okay. And uh, we all classically say, oh, you know, this is a Popeye muscle and we have a biceps rupture here. Um, you know what? It's very amazing to me that uh, still a lot of people miss bicep ruptures. Um, they, in my opinion, are pretty easy to identify, but can be very tricky, especially if people don't have bruising or if um, people might have a large arm, you don't see that Popeye muscle uh, present itself uh, like uh, some people do. And so let's talk a little bit about, let's start with some anatomy today, okay? So let's start with the long head of the biceps, the most common uh, tendon of the biceps to be torn, okay? Now, the biceps muscle, remember, is a two-joint muscle. It helps to flex the elbow, and it also helps to flex the shoulder. It helps to supinate the elbow also, so it really does a lot. Um, and we know that two-joint muscles are at higher risk of injury than uh, one-joint muscles because they're at a mechanical disadvantage. Now, Think about this uh, long head of the biceps. If we if we leave the bicep muscle, work our way superiorly, uh, we leave the muscular tendinous junction, get up into the bicipital groove. It goes through the groove and then through the capsule, all right, through the shoulder capsule. Now, the biceps, the long head of the biceps is both an intra-articular, so inside the um, capsule, intra-articular structure and extra-articular structure. Why is this so important? Well, the biceps is a very big pain generator. The proximal biceps, uh, and especially the long head of the biceps, is a very big pain generator. That tenosynovium around the tendon um, can cause a lot of discomfort. It can become inflamed. It can become frayed. And the reason you should know that it is both intra and extra articular is because when somebody has an injection for biceps tendon discomfort, you should know where that injection was. If the injection was given intra-articular, well, there are other structures that can be causing the pain, like a labrum or a glenohumeral arthritis, along with the intra-articular portion of the biceps. If the injection was given along the bicep tendon extra-articularly and they get relief, well, that tells you a little bit of something. That tells you where that discomfort is coming from, okay? So remember, it goes up over the bicepital groove through the capsule and attaches to the supraglenoid rim. And there it also has fibers that attach to the uh, superior aspect of the glenoid labrum. And uh, that's, you know, where we get this involvement with the slap lesions and, you know, issues like that and, and labral dysfunction. But we're going to leave that for another podcast. Um, so that is the insertion of the long head of the biceps. Now, the short head of the biceps inserts of the coracoid process. Now, how many of you out there have ever seen or heard of a short head of the biceps rupture? And if you have, I want you to um, go to my YouTube channel, and there'll be in the, there'll be links in the, in this podcast today in the show notes. Go to the YouTube channel and leave me a note that you've seen a short head of the biceps rupture. I've been at this for 26 years. I have never seen that happen. Why is that? Well, number one, the short head of the biceps does not cross uh, underneath the acromion. It doesn't get impinged like the long head does. It doesn't cross over the joint, so it doesn't get stressed. And it's at a mechanical advantage. It's pretty much a straight shot from the biceps muscle to the coracoid process. And as a result, has a nice attachment there uh, to that coracoid process. And it's pretty much a straight shot. So you rarely, rarely, rarely ever have a problem with the short head of the biceps. So that's why if you tear the long head, you can still survive without a long head because the short head will uh, help out and, uh, and do some work there. Now, let's migrate our way down to the uh, insertion of the uh, biceps, which is at the radial tuberosity. Uh, that tendon is a little bit larger and um, it helps to not only flex the elbow, 
Okay, but also supinate the uh, forearm. Now, there are people out there who will argue that it's a primary elbow flexor, and others will argue that it's a primary supinator. Um, I look at it as a better supinator than an elbow flexor because if you were to take the biceps and throw it in the garbage, um, you would still be able to flex the elbow because the brachialis muscle, which sits just um, posterior to the biceps, is a, a one joint muscle, attaches at the uh, brachial, uh, at, at the humerus, and um, it, it helps to flex the elbow. It's a primary flexor and um, really is uh, mechanically at, a, at an advantage there. So you really don't need the biceps to flex the elbow. You can still survive. And plus, you have to think of the brachioradialis, which is a forearm muscle, but also crosses the elbow joint and helps as a, a secondary and tertiary uh, flexor of the elbow. So, um, you know, you need to identify if somebody has a distal biceps rupture. And we're going to talk about this here in just a little bit. Um, let's talk about, um, you know, why the biceps ruptures. Now, the proximal long head of the biceps, uh, you know, is, is, is a smaller tendon. And when you extend your arm, and, and I have a YouTube video on this, and you need to go to the link in this show now and, and listen to this topic on active and passive insufficiency. Now, if you're a PT student, you've probably learned this in school, um, but you really need to understand active and passive sufficiency of a muscle. And it's simple, okay? A lengthened muscle is mechanically inefficient and a shortened muscle is mechanically inefficient. Therefore, being susceptible at the lengthened range and the shortened range, and a muscle is strongest in its midpoint. So the biceps is really strongest when the elbow is at about 90 degrees, okay? When it's all the way down to 180 degrees and the hand takes a load and you're tr still trying to pull into flexion, the shoulder's trying to flex, the elbow's trying to flex, but the arm is extended, um, that's a high risk position. So just imagine this, you have a basketball in your hand, you're going down the court, you're going to make a layup and your hand is underneath the basketball, you're lifting the ball up toward the basket and somebody comes by and just slams down on the top of the basketball and you have this sudden extension moment go through your arm while you're still trying to flex it okay and we've seen people rupture their biceps this way um and so it's usually some sort of a, a mechanical inefficiency that happens in a forceful movement so it's important that um, you understand how this tears now how does it present when somebody tears a biceps sometimes you can identify these without even touching the patient they can tell you a story just like this gentleman I saw just recently, he said, I was pulling on my snowblower with one arm. And as I was pulling on this snowblower, which was really, really heavy, he was trying to flex the elbow. And he's demonstrating to me, he was trying to flex the elbow and bring the arm across his body while he's sliding it forward him. And the snowblower caught in a piece of cement on the floor and it got stuck there. And he had this immediate pain in his distal uh, biceps down into the uh, anticubital fossa, proximal forearm some swelling in that area, some significant discomfort. And he says, I go to the gym now and I can't do any bicep curls. It really hurts down there. So just listening to that story, you know, this is a distal biceps, you know, problem. Um, so some of the things you're going to look at in, in regards to ruptures, a distal biceps rupture will, will swell. It will cause a lot of pain in the antecubital fossa, but there's usually almost always bruising in the distal bicep region and into the antecubital fossa. Now, a proximal long head of the biceps rupture will oftentimes cause bruising down into the muscle belly, sometimes into the anterior shoulder. Now, it's important that you know that because, excuse me, rotator cuffs rarely, rarely, rarely ever bruise when they tear. Okay, it's very, very uncommon for rotator cuff to bruise. So if you have bruising in the anterior shoulder, anterior biceps region, you need to be thinking biceps rupture or fracture of the shoulder. Okay, and I have some nice videos that demonstrate a young lady who had a fractured shoulder who had some bruising in that area. And in the show notes, I have a, a, a video of a patient who just freshly ruptured their bicep. Uh, and I'll show you how I evaluate that patient and also how we're going to manage it. And uh, also a modification on, on uh, biceps testing to identify that he actually does have a rupture. So bruising is usually a sign of a, a ruptured biceps, especially when it's anterior brachial region. Um, and so... Uh, what we're going to do in, in just a little bit is we're going to talk about, you know, identifying them and what do you do when you have a biceps rupture and why it's important to identify 
you know which one it is because uh, we need to expedite things but in the in the meantime i'd like to take a moment to hear a word from our sponsor and please stay with us and uh, we'll talk a little bit about how we manage and treat these Hello and welcome back. And what we're going to do is talk a little bit about, um, you know, how to identify a proximal versus a distal. And, uh, you know, when you find that uh, in a ruptured biceps, you know, what do you need to do? So, again, we talk about this proximal long head of the biceps. Um, people rupture these and oftentimes when they do, they actually have less shoulder pain. Um, classic example, my father-in-law was, um, he had, he had injured his rotator cuff. He's a farmer and he was also having a lot of bicipital pain, but he had good integrity of his biceps. He had a nice, you know, the biceps was nice and lengthened and in its right position. He had resistance to supination, elbow flexion, and, um, but it had appeared that he had torn his rotator cuff. He says, listen, I've got to plant my, the potatoes and I've got to do this work and I, there's no way I can I, I can stop. I said, well, the one thing you should not do is extend the elbow out and try to lift something with your hand because you're really at high risk of, of you know, rupturing your biceps. He was so inflamed. And so next day, he uh, comes to see me at the end of the day and he says, something happened. I felt this pop in my arm, but my shoulder feels better and my my arm looks funny. So it, that he did exactly you know what I told him not to do. Um, he reached out and he put his palm, he supinated his hand with his elbow extended, shoulder flexed, and he tried to push this object up on a planter, which required a lot of force. And when he did that, he, he ruptured the proximal biceps. Um, he had weakness in the supination, weakness in the elbow flexion. He had a super huge Popeye muscle with lots of bruising. Um, but interestingly enough, significantly less pain in his anterior shoulder. And actually continued on uh, with the season and did better after he ruptured it. Was he still able to flex his elbow? Sure, he was able to still be functional. So we don't need to get too excited about proximal um, biceps ruptures. Some people like to get them fixed for aesthetics, um, usually men more so than women. Uh, and so, you know, I, I think it's something that warrants uh, letting an orthopedic surgeon know and, uh, you know, having some sort of a follow-up. But if somebody ruptures their distal biceps, they're going to have generally more pain. These are painful episodes for them. It's a much larger tendon. And functionally, they are much more limited because it not only does it affect the elbow flexion, but affects supination also. So things like turning a doorknob and opening a door or using a screwdriver um, or anything where they're like supinating and flexing toward them, anything where they have to pull a lot, they'll have significant decrease in function. The more important thing here is that Distal bicep ruptures are, are, you know, relatively easy for an orthopedic surgeon to repair, but the success rates afterwards are much better if you can manage them and fix them faster. So I usually make it a point if I identify somebody with a distal bicep rupture to give a call to a local orthopedic surgeon and say, you know, I'm really suspicious that they have this biceps rupture. They've got the swelling. They have the perfect mechanism. They have a Popeye muscle. Um, they might have a couple special tests, um, like the hook test, which is identified uh, and in the link of the show notes today. I need you to go to that. Make sure that you take a look at how we do the hook test why it's so important, why it's so simple. And it, actually, I think I'd even seen a study not too long ago that showed the hook test is more sensitive than an MRI for identifying a distal biceps rupture. I love this test. Uh, and then I'll also show you how I like to test biceps when somebody has a large arm and they don't have this very definitive Popeye muscle that's sticking out there. Um, I have a test that I developed that I really like to use uh, it's not named or anything like that, and I don't know of anybody else who does it, um, but certainly works well for me. So make sure that you check out the show notes today uh, to help identify uh, you know, these tests. You'll even see a patient with a real biceps rupture, a fresh one, um, and it's um, uh, pretty cool. Not uh, cool for the patient, but uh, cool for us to see because there's nothing like learning by seeing the real deal and um, having a little mentorship to kind of you know nudge you and uh, make you feel more comfortable with your orthopedic evaluation skills. So um, again, folks, I'd like to thank you for listening to Ortho Eval Pal, and I'm really enjoying this. And uh, if you have any questions, leave a message at orthoevalpal.com. Go to our Get in Touch page, 
And uh, make sure that when you um, listen to our podcast on the uh, website, that you uh, click on the title and that'll bring you up to another page that'll let you uh, get signed in and uh, go ahead and sign in. We'll make sure that uh, we put you on our list so that uh, you are uh, notified every single time we do one of these. We'll also be doing some CME courses in March and April of 2019 in Bangor, Maine. And uh, we're going to be doing the shoulder one day, knee the next day. We're going to be doing the foot and ankle on one day and cervical spine and lumbar spine. We'll be breaking this down. It's going to be very lab heavy. Uh, and uh, we'll be talking about how to identify many problems and how to manage them. It'll be answering a lot of questions and just having a great time with that. We always have fun with our courses uh, and uh, get to learn a lot. So again, folks, thanks for listening. I really appreciate it. Uh, make sure you uh, check us out on iTunes and uh, give us a rating and review. I would greatly appreciate that. Have a great day.